Well, I suppose you expect gratitude for putting me under house arrest instead of putting me behind bars? <clears throat> no, but I'm hoping you'll change your mind and let us take you to the hospital. Well, please, hold your breath while you're waiting. Oh, Brooke, darling, are you all right? Aunt Phoebe, please, if you're going to lecture me, I don't need it. I've already had enough from these people. Please go home. But I thought you might like some company. I'm so worried about you. You know, the rest of you can go home. I promise you, I'm not going to overpower my guard and then run away. Brooke, is there anything else you need? Yes, there is. I'd like to see Jamie. Think you can find it in your heart? To give a mother a little time with her son? Absolutely. I'll go home and I'll bring him back immediately. Now, there's paramedics and a private ambulance right outside. I'd like to bring Petra along with him. That way, if anything happens to you, Jamie will still be well, but well be taken care of. That won't be necessary. I'll be spending the night here. I don't know why you're asking me my permission to do anything. I'm under house arrest. Come on, let's go. You're going to do what you damn well please anyway. Darling, how are you feeling? I'm fine, all right? I'm fine, and this baby is fine. Here, let's get it real tall, real tall. Let's see, real tall. Oh my goodness! Look, Aunt Phoebe, look, look, look. Jamie, do that. Well, I'm doing it for him. And then, what do we do? What do we do? Oh, we didn't make it. No, I set it up, and he knocks it down just like his daddy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. We could do this all day. This is a lot of fun, huh? We're having a good time. Oh, knock it down. Oh, knock it down. They, uh, it's nice to be on a trip, but it's nice to be back Knock home. It down. Yeah, this is our real home, isn't it? And soon you're going to have a baby brother or baby sister to share it with. We're going to be so happy. Hmm? Okay, ready? Are you ready? I'm sorry, Edmund. I, I wish I could have told you in another way or another time or place. This is incredible. I know. I'm sorry. First she loses Laura, Jamie. How is she supposed to cope with this? She's not coping. That's the problem. She's denying the whole thing. She refuses to admit that there's even a problem with her pregnancy. What about Dr. Kadamia? No, Can everybody explain has to tried to talk to her. Tom, Livia, even Ted. She won't listen to anybody. She thinks that it's a conspiracy to take her baby away from her. Please, Edmund, please, won't you just try to talk to her? What well, makes you think if everybody else has talked to her that, that she'll listen to me? Because you had a, more than a friendship with her once. Once? I know it's a long shot, but you're the only one left. Please, Edmund, won't you try to talk to her? Won't you try to save her life? there. Tom and Ted and Derek standing guard like good little soldiers. Oh, forget about those vultures, darling. Try to really save her having some time to play here with your little son. It's hard to do that when I know that they're out there and they're just, they're just waiting. All right, I'll take care of them. You stay here and rest. You're so good. Want to do a garage? Come here. Come on over here. Let's do a garage for the car. Come, come. You do such nice garages. I think you're going to be an architect. What do you think? We just want to knock them down. Here. Officer, is it absolutely necessary for you to be so near the house? How is Brooke holding up? Any luck talking here into the hospital? No. And it's more than I can bear. If you just try to stay calm. How? That the poor child isn't even thinking straight. I, I will never get her to agree to have that operation. It's as if she has an, an unconscious death wish. Don't say that, Phoebe. Don't even think it. She's going to pull through this. She's going to get the help she needs somehow. Well, not from you, you assassin adulterer. If you want to bring me up on moral charges, you can do it later. Right now, Brooke's survival is the only thing that counts. There's got to be a way to get through to her. Well, you'll never find the way. What Brooke needs now is a man, a real man, a, a man who can trust course, somebody she could... Why didn't I think of it before? What Brooke needs is Edmund. 
Edmund, everybody else has tried. You're the only one left. Please, won't you try to save her life? You're her last chance. It's not too late. Please, Brooke needs you. No, it's okay. I'll just wait for you back inside. I don't want to interrupt if You're you You're not like going talk. anywhere. I want you to hear this, too. He's right, Maria. Really, please stay. Well, I'm not quite sure I heard you correctly. Did you say that Brooke's life needed saving? That's right. Her pregnancy is ectopic. Oh, no. She refuses to believe it. Dr. Kadami got her to check into the hospital for the laparotomy, but... She ran off before she could have the procedure. Didn't she understand that if her fallopian tube burst that she could die? Yes. Well, no. Kadami explained everything, okay? He told her that surgery is her only option, but she thinks that Kadami and Tad are in some kind of conspiracy to take her baby away. She doesn't trust anyone. Tad, Tom, and Livia Cudahy, they've all tried to explain to her that surgery is her only option, but she... she won't hear them. She sees that they're all her enemies. She's tuned everybody out. Well, so what? So... Why do you think that Edmund would have a better chance of getting to her? Because we've just explored and exhausted all the other options. He's the only hope that Brooke has left. I'm really sorry. I, it looked like you were celebrating in there. I never would have interrupted if I didn't think that it was a desperate situation. If Edmund can just get through to Brooke, if he can just convince her to have this operation before she... As a doctor, you must understand. Yes. I understand perfectly. Edmund, will you please go to work? Does Brooke want to see me? Did she ask for me by name? No. As a matter of fact, she didn't. Edmund, have you taken leave of your senses? After what's happened today, probably. Well, it won't work. Why not? Well, there was a time, yes, when Brooke could have done anything that Edmund asked. But when she begged him to say that he was the father of the, her unborn child, he flatly refused. Yeah, well, that makes him a hero in my book. Well, in her book, it was an outright betrayal. I wouldn't be surprised if she even blames him for having lost custody of J Jamie. Yeah, well, she's got Jamie back. And I'll be damned if I'm going to spend the, the next year of his life explaining to him why his mommy had to go to heaven. Oh, bite your oh, come tongue. on, Phoebe. You said yourself there was a time that Brooke would have done anything for Edmund. So even if the last thing she ever said to him was, I hate your guts, if there was the real thing between them, then it's still there. All he's got to do is step up and remind her. But then he luck, she'll realize she's got a hell of a lot to live for. You're assuming that Brooke will even deign to see the man, let alone let him talk her into having surgery. Phoebe, I'm with Ted. Look, I, I think it's a long shot, but we're so close to the wire. What choice do we have? None, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm going to go try and find Edmund. And if you can table your hatred of me long enough, I'd like you to start laying the groundwork. The last thing we need is for Edmund to show up and for Brooke to slam the door in his face. Well, I'll do my best. Yeah, well, you just be careful, because sometimes your best is none too subtle. Well... Don't get upset, Phoebe. Look, if Brooke even suspects for a second that Edmund is on his way over, it'll give her time to shore up her emotional defenses. Just take her on a nice little stroll down memory lane, soften up the ground, let Edmund do the rest. The day I need help from you to tell me how to handle my own niece is the day that I resign as, as dear Aggie. Wish me luck, all of it good. I'm sorry, darling. I tried every trick in the book, but they wouldn't budge. Where's Ted? Oh, he's gone into town in search of coffee. I forbade Mrs. Valentine to surrender as much as a single bean to that scallywag. Thank you, Aunt Phoebe. For what? For letting me spend time here with Jamie. For heaven's sake, darling, this is your home. But it does feel right. Being here again, doesn't it? Oh, if only these walls could talk. Seems like ages ago. Life seemed simpler. But there's not any percentage in looking back, is there? So, life goes on, and that's exactly what I intend to do. I'm going to go on 
with Jamie and this baby. Well, I, I really enjoy being in this house with you. It's like opening a time capsule. So many memories and changes. I have to admit, I do miss our dear sweet Edmund. Edmund, why bring him up? Because he was so much a part of this house. I remember one evening, it was raining, and I, I turned my ankle, hurt myself on your patio right outside. And he came and rescued me, carried me across the threshold, installed me in your bedroom. I felt terrible about that, because I knew that you and Edmund wanted to be alone. It's ancient history, Aunt Phoebe. It's like it happened to somebody else. Well, you never know when some sly little breeze might come along and stir up the ashes. <laughs> My life is in ruins, and you're still trying to fix me up with Edmund Gray. Really, I mean, when are you ever going to get it through your head that he and I are finished? Darling, I'm not thinking in terms of romance now. What you and Edmund had was something far deeper. It was a bond based on respect and friendship. That sort of thing never dies. Brooke didn't ask for me. My name never came up. No, Edmund, it's So you just it's... automatically assumed I would drop everything and just ride to a rescue? She needs you. What am I, some kind of a modern-day medicine man, some miracle worker? One word for me and Brooke is cured? Not what I said. Hey, guys, uh, Papa's still toasting. He's worked his way up to the W's. Okay, just, just tell him we'll be there. Is there a problem? Would you just tell him, please? Would you tell Papa that we're coming? Please. Sure. Okay, Edmund, look, Brooke didn't ask for you by name. The only person that she asked for was her Aunt Phoebe. Fine. Well, Phoebe's family. Let her do her stuff. Nothing is working. She's just gone crazy. I don't believe that. She left the hospital in the middle of the night. She got Jamie, got on a train, and headed out of town. Now, Tad and Derek had to track her down to some farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. I talked to Adam before I came over here. He told me that the only way that they could get her out of here and there and back to Pine Valley was by putting her under arrest for breaking the custody agreement. Now she's under house arrest at the cottage on Phoebe's estate. I don't want to hear this. She has lost her husband. She has lost custody of Jamie to Tad. And now Kadami is telling her that she's going to have to abort this pregnancy or die. She's terrified. She's scared to death, Edmund. She can't face but it. But it just doesn't make sense because an ectopic pregnancy can never progress past the first trimester, so Brooke doesn't have any choice. Of course. She's been told that over and over and over again. But she thinks that everybody is part of this big master plan to destroy her baby. She needs a face that she can trust, Edmund. She needs you. You think... You are the only person who hates Tad as much as she does. You're the only person that she'll believe is not part of this conspiracy. It's the truth. Right now, you're the closest thing to a lifesaver she's got. <laughs>